Welcome back everybody to another Tutorial Tuesday. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get COVID-19 data through these APIs listed on the Postman website. Now before this video begins, if you could leave a quick like and if you're feeling generous, also subscribe, it would help out a ton. So let's get started real quick. Um, so we're on the Postman website. The API that we want to use is this one right here, the COVID tracking project. If you click here, you have documentation on the type of information you could get. Um, not all of these links work. Say if we want to go here to API screenshots, um, unfortunately it says page not found. However, this link, which is the one that I'll leave in the description, does work. And it's covidtracking.com slash API slash state slash daily. Now this might give you a little more information than you do need, but this gives you the daily increases for each state um, listed as their state abbreviation and also gives you some for other US territories like Puerto Rico and the American Samoa Islands. So if we start right now, we opened up a new project right here. I already began with a new environment just to see if there was any packages that you needed. However, I'm fairly sure that most of these packages come standard install with Python so if we begin now, um, we're going to start with installing from URL lib dot request import URL open. And this will have us open that URL and try to get that JSON response from it. And the second package we're going to need is import JSON. And that's it. That's all we need for this API. And so to open it, you're going to do URL equals, then put it in double quotation marks. We're going to copy this link right here and paste it in. All right, and now we're going to want to open it. So we're going to do response equals URL open, and then plug in that URL. If we're print out this response as it is right now, it would give us a HTTP response object. However, we can't really do anything with this yet. Um, we need it to be like the JSON in it to be loaded out. So if we now delete this and we do JSON dot load response and you know name it as a variable now when we print out J, it will give us a full JSON just blob. And while this might be helpful, we're going to have to parse through it a little bit. You can see it's printing exactly what this site is right here. And you can see the date right here. Um, it reads it a little, a little weird, but it's July 19th, 2020 right here and for some states it'll go all the way back to almost January I think uh, but I'm just gonna show you real basic how to separate it by state or by date so if we want to do that now um, I'll show you how it's kind of structured so if we do J and then we pass in zero it's going to be showing us just the first entry for it's almost sorted in like a dictionary in a JSON format. So from here, um, we have the first response in it, which is from July 19th, 2020 for the state AK. I'm pretty sure that's Alaska. It shows the number of positive cases, the number of negative cases. If we go all the way down, it'll show you hospitalized, I think positive increase so this is information we might want because it shows you the number of increases for that day wow that's kind of a lot of increases um so now to get that actually we we don't have to delete that because if we put this in a another parentheses and then now we are calling upon that dictionary item so if we do state it's going to print that AK now, telling us um, the state name for that entry. If we did the same with date, 
boom, you have the date. It's a little slow just because it has to kind of parse through all that data. Now, say if we wanted a positive increase. I don't know if this will return the exact or I'll get an error just because of the way I wrote the entry, but I did get it actually. So 118 for positive increase. So say if we wanted to go through all of this and get all of the data. So let's start with doing n equals zero and that will basically fill in this spot. And we will do for item in j. We're going to print this out and then replace this with n. And also I would say we want to print out the state with it. So let's print out the state and let's also print out the date with it. All right. So let's run this as is. Oh, wait, I forgot. We're going to have to iterate over it somehow. So we're going to do plus equals one. Now this should work. Okay. So it's giving us all the entries now. Um, Alaska on the 19th, 118 cases. I think Alabama is AL. Um, wow, 1,777. Going all the way down. We scroll all the way down. It'll bring us back to January 22nd, 2020 in Washington, which is actually where the first case of coronavirus, I think, started. So it's pretty helpful. So say if you wanted to, you know, sort it by state and only print out those variables, you could say J of N, right? And then state. And then we'll put it in an if function and say if it's equal to um, let's say CA, which is California. Um, then we will print this. However, if it isn't, we're just going to continue um, along this block. Actually, let's do this plus one in here. This way it still gets called upon and then continue. And then also put it in here because once you continue, it's not going to hit this n plus equals 1. So now if we do this, it should run all of the cases for California. So it starts on March 4th, 2020. And if we go all the way to the most recent, we have July 19th, um, 2020. And actually it is the 19th if you see. So I guess they update this sometime in the evening. And that's when you could get the new data for it. However, if you're calling it in the morning, you, you're probably not going to have the most recent and relevant information. Um, so that's a quick tutorial. There might be a lot easier way to um, parse this JSON file. However, um, it's a good way to start if you want some data. If you want to maybe create a COVID tracking website or a COVID bot on Twitter, this is a great way to get information and it is fairly fast. Um, if you also want to check out, you know, the other COVID APIs, they have other information you could get per countries. I think this one was just for the United States. However, if you try any of these other APIs using the same method, um, you should get a similar result. So thank you for that. Like I said, if you found this video helpful at all, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you next week for the next tutorial Tuesday.